Good morning, everybody. This is a live extreme weather briefing as we have a continued active monsoon pattern across the desert southwest, including a large portion of Arizona, western New Mexico, uh, southern Utah, and even into southwestern Colorado uh, once again, uh, where some of the models are showing some storms, heavy rain producing storms, and a continued flash flood potential. You can see the flash flood watch, which is in green here, and it does cover the whole entire state basically the whole entire state of Arizona, with the exception being the far southwestern corner and northeastern corner of that state. You can also see the grand staircase of southern Utah is also included in that uh, flash flood watch. And uh, southeastern Utah and southwestern Colorado, uh, even including the Moab area, uh, there could see some flash flood, uh, flash flood producing storms as well, uh, and into western New Mexico. Uh, this is with a closed low that has been migrating across New Mexico very slowly. And uh, the northerly flow on the western edge of that easterly moving upper level low, uh, basically an inverted trough uh, as it's losing its closed low characteristics as it heads off to the west. Uh, the northerly flow here, uh, relatively at the low levels at least, causes those uh, relatively new young storms to move from north to south. And as they grow up higher up in the troposphere, they tap into those weaker mid and upper level uh, upper tropospheric winds and then they slow down can anchor on uh, the terrain as well uh, even anchor on some of those burn scars there was a storm yesterday that went up to the west of Sedona that anchored on the Raphael fire burn scar that likely produced a plug uh, as well uh, heading down the creek there uh, just to the north of Cottonwood and Clarksdale uh, we intercepted the flood in New River uh, the New River flood. Uh, there was also, I believe, a big flood in Skunk Creek as well. And I teamed up with David Rankin, uh, the flash flood guru, uh, out there to intercept this flood. There you can see a scorpion that we saw that was escaping those flood waters. Possibly was carried some distance as well out of the mountains there down in New River. Uh, the guru, flash flood guru, David Rankin, just posted a video uh, on Rankin Studio. Uh, you can find uh, that video as well. Uh, but here you can see that big time flash flood just ripping down uh, the basin there. Uh, definitely a, a very powerful, potentially deadly uh, flash flood as well. Uh, the green again are those flash flood watches where we expect another two days of an active monsoon here across Arizona uh, with that closed low or inverted trough moving in the easterlies from east to west. But David actually intercepted this flash flood earlier. I missed it by about 20 minutes, the initial wall. Uh, he caught it there right at Interstate 17 just as it was coming out of the mountains. And he spoke with a couple of locals that were working a rope swing over the New River Wash. And uh, they were aware that there was a flash flood warning, but they thought it would already be ongoing when they got there. And they nearly died. A uh, big time flash flood came ripping down New River Gorge. It actually filled the bottom portion of their vehicle. Thankfully, they had a Ford Raptor. They had a very robust vehicle, so they were able to get out of that flash flood. But it was from this flash flood here that was a little bit further down about three miles just to the north of highway 74 uh, where that uh, where, where we intercepted it i did try to get the drone in the air as well but the lens was fogged up because it was just so humid out there across arizona uh, record breakingly cold monsoonal surge as well uh, happened yesterday with those temperatures being held into the 70s across phoenix uh, relatively cool weather here uh, aided by that back door um, moisture surge coming in from the northeast and there are a couple different ways that you can get um, monsoonal surges across the southwest one is when that anti-cyclone anchors a little bit further to the east over the four corners and you get a southerly surge of moisture off the eastern tropical pacific another one is the one that we're getting right now uh, which can lead to historic flooding where you get a disturbance embedded within the easterlies on the south side of that anti-cyclone that can be shifted a little bit further to the west and you get that moisture coming in from the northeast the lift uh, with an up, upper level disturbance coming in from the northeast as well initially being a closed uh, low as it moved from east to west we're still on the western portion of that slow moving easterly closed low uh, so it looks like today we're going to also see some north to south moving storms here across central and southern arizona and the models are showing an uptick in the precipitation tomorrow on sunday across the entire state of arizona so i do expect tomorrow to be a big time monsoon day as well uh, across a large portion of Arizona into southern Utah, southwestern Colorado. I'm going to be working those floods once again today, uh, but we also have a severe weather threat across uh, northern Illinois into southern lower Michigan. Uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye on that as well. The tornado threat looks relatively low 
uh, with those westerly 850 winds uh, leading to a little bit uh, reduced uh, low-level wind shear. Where the greatest cape is located over northern Illinois, you don't have quite as strong of that low-level shear back further west along that frontal boundary. The low-level shear is actually maximized across southern lower Michigan, even in a northwestern Indiana lake. Uh, but with that greater low-level shear from southern lower Michigan into southern Ontario, I do think that there is a threat of an isolated tornado or two up there, uh, especially southern lower Michigan into, um, into southern Ontario as well. So we've got a, a multifaceted threat uh, here today uh, looking at the Radar Omega app. Uh, just some relatively light rain uh, this morning across southern Arizona as well. But similar to yesterday, I do anticipate most of these storms to develop to the north of that cloud cloud shield over the north, northern Arizona. That's where that marginal risk for even severe weather is anticipated and intercepted a couple of those strong storms yesterday to the south of Flagstaff that had some gusty winds gusting over 50 miles an hour, very heavy rain as well. And I was initially targeting that flash flood warning to the west of Prescott uh, that with that storm anchoring off the Raphael fire burn scar uh, to the west of Prescott. But then... Uh, David Rankin said, keep coming south on 17. I uh, definitely had a flash flood signature with four to five inches of rain being indicated over about an hour or two period across uh, the mountains just to the northeast of New River. And that fell in those two washes, Skunk Creek as well as New River Wash. And Skunk Creek, there was actually some video coming out of the New River area of vehicles that were getting swept down that flash flood. So definitely showing the power uh, of those flash floods certainly there. Uh, but you can see this light rain across southern Arizona right now could lead to some isolated flooding. Uh, but I think as we go through the afternoon, uh, as the sun can burn off those mid and high level, cl level clouds here just to the north of that precipitation shield, that's the area that I'm watching, including out here across western New Mexico. There were numerous flash flood warnings out there as well yesterday. Uh, but basically on the north side of that cloud shield, ahead of this inverted trough, it's moving from east to west, uh, basically like a tropical wave there, southern portion of that uh, subtropical high. Um, the steering flow is definitely stronger, the low levels of the troposphere, and once these storms get taller and grow up uh, into the lower atmosphere, then they tap into those weaker winds aloft, they can slow down and then can likely anchor on that terrain. But we could definitely see the uh, wave a lot more effectively uh, with satellite imagery, water vapor loop here. Uh, we can uh, pull up that water vapor imagery here on the Radar Omega app. There you can see the spin, and it looks like it's centered very close to the Albuquerque area this morning. There you can see that cyclonic spin. And interestingly, this easterly wave is associated with a little dry pocket uh, of air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, but you do have some moisture coming around the back side of this. I was talking with David Rankin uh, over the last couple of days, and some of the model runs have shown that this uh, inverted trough coming settling in here to southern Arizona uh, during the day today, and then the southerly flow on the back side of that system will hammer southeastern Arizona here, and there is a big-time burn scar on the mountains near uh, Tucson on the southern side of those mountains, including Mount Lemmon. Uh, there, uh, at least that area, and uh, with that fire hose on the backside of this inverted trough with those big time southerlies transporting that moisture up into the higher terrain there in southeastern Arizona. There certainly is the threat of a debris plug uh, coming off of that as well, so I'm going to be monitoring that aspect. The models have backed off of that a little bit as they're showing this closed um, inverted trough here becoming more of an open wave and weakening as it slides southwest into Arizona. And that could result in uh, this fire hose on the east side of that upper level system not materializing as much over southeastern Arizona. But in general, this lift uh, that's migrating uh, uh, southwest uh, across central and northern Arizona is going to be associated with an uptick in thunderstorms, flash flood producing storms here. And I also think that this dry pocket of air aloft that is co coincident with that inverted trough could result in some clearing of these mid and upper level clouds across the target area here. Central Arizona, including Phoenix as well, uh, will have some more flash flood producing rain uh, throughout this area uh, as this migrates off to the southwest. And then it's just going to sit here and spin tomorrow uh, during the day on Sunday across Arizona. And actually the forecast models, the short range forecast models are showing greater precipitation totals during the day tomorrow across Arizona. Uh, but the HRRR seems to be a bit of an outlier today uh, with the reduction of those thunderstorms and the three kilometer NAM definitely shows 
an abundance of storms across central and northern Arizona uh, as this uh, inverted trough slides off to the southwest uh, across Arizona, uh, leading to big time uh, eruption of uh, monsoonal storms uh, across the state. But definitely an interesting monsoonal setup. I haven't really chased uh, one of these with these disturbances coming along the south uh, side of that uh, high. You can kind of see the uh, the spin here of this high a little bit, and then you got this disturbance here in the southern edge of that high, almost breaking it down. Uh, but the high is definitely centered further west of the four corners. Uh, sometimes uh, these monster high pressure systems will anchor over the four corners, and then the southerlies on the west side uh, of that uh, anticyclone will result in moisture surges up from the Sea of Cortez and the eastern tropical Pacific. Uh, but this one has an inverted trough and easterly waves sliding along the southern uh, periphery of that high pressure. So a very unusual, uh, interesting monsoonal pattern here across the southwestern U.S. And then we've got this uh, trough up off, off in the uh, approaching the Great Lakes here. Uh, flash flood warnings across the Traverse City area. Uh, that my uncle Bruce uh, has been experiencing up there, including some street flooding up there. You can see those flash flood warnings here uh, on the Radar Omega app there in green. Uh, but that's all ahead of this potent upper level storm system here uh, that is approaching the Great Lakes right now from the northwest. And that frontal boundary is going to sag down across northern Illinois into central uh, lower Michigan, up into southern Ontario, continuing to slide off to the southeast. And then storms are going to erupt along that frontal boundary. Likely they're going to be more uh, straight line damaging winds associated with that, uh, with those westerly uh, low level jet, with that westerly low level jet that's relatively parallel to that frontal boundary. It is going to have a tendency to form more linear uh, segments uh, as that slides off to the southeast, but it is definitely uh, something to keep an eye on. Uh, that severe weather threat could be quite substantial across uh, lower Michigan, and I'm going to break that down in detail right now based on these uh, forecast models. And uh, we'll start off with the uh, Energy Helicity Index, uh, three kilometer NAM, uh, zero to one kilometer EHI. It's a combination of surface base cape and that low level shear. And you can see here that there are greater values in general across southern lower Michigan. That shows that there's greater low level shear available to these storms across southern lower Michigan and into southern Ontario. And then you get a reduction of wind shear across northern Illinois, despite having very high cape out there across northern Illinois. Uh, normally that would inflate uh, the EHIs out there, but you have such a reduction of that zero to one kilometer storm relative shear that really where you have the greatest cape back here across northern Illinois, uh, you don't have as much of a favorable wind shear profile uh, for those supercell storms. And then you have slightly lower cape across lower Michigan, but you have greater low level wind shear boosting those zero to one kilometer EHI values a bit over southern lower Michigan. And that's because you have the stronger one kilometer wind out here across southern lower Michigan into southern Ontario, even more backed up across southern Ontario with that 850 low kind of ejecting well northeast of that instability axis, which is uh, greatest across northern Illinois. Then you can see those uh, basically 15 to 20 knot 850 westerly 850 winds parallel to that frontal boundary, not squeezing out as much in the way of wind shear uh, as we do uh, across uh, central and southern lower Michigan. Pulling up a forecast sounding here, it does look like it is supportive of a tornado with a southeasterly moving storm at about 30 knots, squeezing out quite a bit of zero to one kilometer storm relative helicity across southern lower Michigan. Actually in excess of 200 out there, quite a bit of cape as well. Uh, de decent uh, elevated mix layer coming in there between 700 and 500 millibars. With that decrease in the green line, uh, you get some dry air coming in in the mid troposphere that is going to lead to a little bit of cape. But a lot of westerlies throughout that profile that is going to cause a tendency for these storms to congeal together and create linear line segments. But if you can get uh, a supercell structure across southern lower Michigan, then I do think that there is a threat of a tornado out there uh, across my home state. That's where I was born. Grand Rapids, Michigan here. Dew points into the 70s. Actually, mid and upper 70s across the Corn Belt there, across northern Illinois, evapotranspiration contributing to those big time dew points and that big time uh, cape as well uh, across northern Illinois. Likely to see some monster storms there as well, just the tornado threat is not as high as it is across southern lower Michigan where you get uh, some more substantial zero to one kilometer shear. This is at 22Z by this time and we're breaking down the three kilometer NAM. Actually even some stronger zero to one kilometer shear across southeastern lower Michigan 
into southern Ontario, uh, where there definitely could be a belt of storms moving through that environment. There you can see these line segments and even some supercell storms evident here across uh, central and southern lower Michigan and even some supercell storms across southern Ontario uh, appear, po appear possible there to the east of southern lower Michigan. And then those storms will back build along that frontal boundary across northern Illinois here as well. More linear segments of storms, not as much in the way of supercells across uh, northern Illinois. But there is decent bulk shear out there. So while the tornado threat is a little bit lower, further west along that frontal boundary, I still think there's going to be a transient supercell structure to across northern Illinois. But the greatest tornado threat, basically from central lower Michigan, uh, just to the near and to the southeast of Grand Rapids, Lansing area, even down to Detroit. Looks like a couple different a prefrontal trough could also form well ahead of that cold front uh, with storms initiating southeastern lower Michigan, uh, southern Ontario as well, uh, possibly interacting with the lake breeze there as well across Lake Erie. But a couple different bands of supercell storms and forecast soundings definitely do support uh, even an isolated tornado threat here across southern lower Michigan. This is at 0 Z, so about 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central Time, showing those storms starting to uh, migrate into southeastern lower Michigan there. Definitely uh, showing potential for a supercell storm or two across southern lower Michigan, even into southern Ontario uh, there as well, back into northern uh, Illinois. Could even still uh, get an isolated tornado, but I do expect it to be more of a linear threat across northern Illinois. Uh, slightly greater tornado potential across southern lower Michigan, southeastern lower Michigan into southern Ontario there. And uh, all of these storms are being caused by a northwesterly flow event, jet street coming in. We could see it very clearly on water vapor. Uh, and even some better upper level winds a bit where those storms are located over south central and southeastern lower Michigan and including southern Ontario there. I know we just had that tornado in Barrie, Ontario with the last setup. So again, Southern Ontario needs to keep an eye out uh, for severe weather potential, including an isolated uh, tornado potential there across Southern Ontario, an area that's already been hit uh, by that severe weather. And there you can see that belt of a westerly low level jet, even shifting to more northwesterly with time with these southeasterly movers. You definitely need that southeasterly storm motion uh, to generate uh, a, a tornado threat uh, with that storm so that's what we have today multi-faceted setup we've got a complex uh, but significant uh, monsoon uptick uh, in the moisture out here across arizona flash flood threat once again especially across those green areas which is the flash flood watch across the desert southwest and of course uh, we do have uh, our target area uh, for severe weather including an isolated tornado threat across northern illinois central and southern lower michigan and into southern ontario there the eastern edge of that uh, red area seems to have a greater, slightly greater uh, tornado potential than the western uh, threat, but there is a non-zero tornado threat across that entire target area. I'm going to be working the monsoon again today, possibly teaming up with David Rankin once again uh, for flash flood potential uh, with that inverted trough moving northeast to southwest across the desert southwest. Uh, but I'm also going to be keeping a very close eye on the severe weather threat across the southern Great Lakes. Thank you for tuning in to my weather reports. Hope you guys have a great Saturday. The Olympics are on TV. I was just watching handball a little bit ago, which looks like a great sport. I would love to play some handball as well uh, myself. Uh, looks like a great sport, great exercise as well. Now I'm watching water polo, women's water polo here, uh, U.S. against Japan, uh, which also should be exciting. Uh, but make sure you flex seal those homes as well here across the uh, southwest. Uh, try to patch up some of those holes because there is a lot of rain uh, coming in for many of those, those areas. There is a very large area of light to moderate rain right now across southern Arizona. But I do expect the development of heavy rain producing storms to the north of that cloud shield, central northern Arizona into western New Mexico, maybe even into southwestern Colorado and southern Utah once again today. So thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your Saturday and dominate the storm.